You want to order your concrete about two days in advance. That way you can be sure that a truck will be available when you're ready to do your pour. When you call the yard, they'll want to know how much concrete you want to order, what strength, the aggregate size, type of Portland cement, and what, if any, admixtures you want placed into the mix. Some of this information is basically standardized, uh, whether you're doing flat work or doing structural uh, foundation walls. Now we'll lay out some of the details of how to address which admixtures, if any, you want to put in, which aggregate size to pick, and strengths. We'll also lay out how to calculate how much concrete you want in the following chapters. We use basic math to come up with the calculations for uh, estimating your concrete. If you take the length and width and thickness of a slab, for example, in feet, and multiply that out, that'll give you the amount of concrete in cubic feet. You can then translate that into cubic yards by multiplying it by 0 .037. As you can see in the example here, an 8 foot by 10 foot slab, 3 and a half inches thick, would equal 23.2 cubic feet or 0.86 cubic yards of concrete. And with a monolithic slab, you want to calculate the slabs separately from the footings. That way you can do a basic math calculation on the width and depth of the footings and a calculation on the slab itself. Add the two together and that'll give you your calculation for the amount of concrete you need. Now in general it's a good idea to add about 10% for waste or for slight uh, variations in the calculations. If you have a perfect rectangle footing to work with then that might not be necessary but out in the field it's rare that you get a perfectly cut uh, footing, so it's a good idea to add a little bit of waste in there to make sure you have enough concrete on the day of the pour. When you're deciding what strength concrete to use, you want to look into your local code book. In general, a 2,500 pounds per square inch mix will be strong enough for any code. When you're deciding what aggregate size to use, if you're doing simple flat work like a sidewalk, a quarter inch gravel and sand is a good mix to use because it's a little more workable. When you're doing a structural monolithic slab like we have in this case, we're using a three-quarter inch gravel and sand as the aggregate types. That gives it a little more structural strength, but it's still workable. Admixtures such as accelerators, retarders, water reducers, and air entrapment can be added to the mix to help with uh, specialized conditions you may be working with. Accelerators speed up the curing time, retarders slow down the, the curing time. Water reducers make mud more plastic so you can actually move it further without losing the strength of the mix. And air entrapment does exactly that. It, it holds millions of little bubbles in the concrete. And what that does is it allows the freeze-thaw cycles to be less impactful on the concrete. There are five different types of Portland cement you can use in your mix. General purpose, type 1, is about the most common that you can use, especially in residential projects. And if you don't specify anything other than this, this is what you'll get in your mix. Type 2 is a reduced heat production, which means that it doesn't produce as much heat as it's curing, so it's good if you have a larger job, gives you more time to work the concrete. High early is the opposite of that. It sets up rapidly, and that's used when you have to put bearing on the concrete soon after the concrete will have cured. Minimal heat production reduces even less heat than uh, the reduced heat production in type 2. So type 4 is used in really large-scale projects like dams and things like that where you have to have a long time of workability. And finally, type 5 sulfate resistant is used in areas where your soil or groundwater has high alkalinity. With concrete, you want to make sure to keep your tools wet. That'll help to keep the concrete from sticking to them. So whenever you're waiting for the concrete to show up or when it's here, or certainly as soon as you're done using the tool, just get your tools nice and wet and uh, it'll keep the concrete from sticking. You want to make sure that the inside of your form boards, your anchor bolts, the whole slab is nice and moist. You know, and do this on the outside as well. And on the outside here, it's just stopping the concrete from sticking to things that you don't want it to stick to, or at least lessening the chance of that happening. On the inside, it serves the same purpose with the inside of the form boards to release them easily, but it also is uh, putting enough moisture content down in the slab itself, without getting it wet, of course, that enables the concrete to cure slowly. If uh, all this sand is dry underneath, it's going to really quickly suck all the moisture out of the concrete and uh, make for a, pouring, a, a poor curing of the concrete. You want to be absolutely sure to be ready when the concrete truck shows up because they won't want to hang around waiting for you. Uh, one question they may ask you is how wet you want your concrete and that will depend on how quickly you want it to cure. Now on this project we don't have a whole lot of time before the sun goes down so I've asked him to keep the mix pretty dry. 
Uh, the drier it is, the harder it is to move around the slab. So if you have the ability to keep it as a wet pour, it's a good idea to pour it uh, as wet as the truck will allow you to do it. And uh, then you'll have a lot of time to work with it and you'll be able to move it around a lot more easily. Another thing you may notice is that he's dumping the concrete pretty much right in the middle of the foundation slab uh, forms here. Because of the terrain, we weren't able to get the truck right up onto the forms. Now, if you can avoid this, do so at any cost, because what it means is I'm going to have to move this concrete to all the corners of the slab without the help of the chute. Uh, not only is this laborious and tiring, but uh, if I'm not careful, I get some separation between the aggregate or the larger pieces of gravel in the concrete and the rest of the mix. Now, if I get separation, that's going to create a problem of, of in uneven curing uh, throughout the rest of the process. And once you've got the form boards pretty much filled with concrete, we're gonna, you want to run a screed board across the top. And you can see we've left a little bit of room down at the end here where we're sliding towards so that any excess concrete will fill that void. If you put too much concrete in at once and then try to screed it out, it just becomes really tiring and it's hard to move the concrete along, especially with a dry mix like we've used on this project. And we're using a magnesium screed board. You can also just use a 2x4 or 2x6. Uh, any of those will work. The magnesium is a little easier to use because it's a, a bit stiffer than the wood and it cleans up really nicely. It's also much lighter than using a 2x6, so uh, the weight of the concrete is enough. You don't have to have the weight of the screed board itself as well. Now once you've screeded everything, you can make sure that your corners are square and put your brace back on in place if you need to. Now with all the bracing we've got here and the corners marked off, your, your corners may have stayed square during that pour with no problem, in which case you can take the braces off to trowel out and then replace them when you're done. So basically what we've done is we've got the screed board down through here, but we can't get all the way down to the end because of our anchor bolts. So I'm just using a bull float, a magnesium float, excuse me, not a bull float, a magnesium float to just level it out, get this basically backed in, and I'm using this area back in behind it as a screed in the other direction. So we're still do, using the screed process, but a little bit different on a smaller scale here. Get into the corner. And again, now here you can see where the raising of this, of this brace really comes to, into play now, because I can get my trowel right under here and get under by these bolts. If I had the brace down on the concrete, same level, I wouldn't be able to get in there and clean that up. Okay, now you don't have to do a thoroughly uh, impressive job here. All you need to do is get it basically knocked down. We're going to come back in now with uh, either a jitterbug or a roller bug tamper and tamp it down. Now that takes some of the larger aggregate and kind of sinks it down in and it brings the cream up to the top. So it not only compacts it, but it also uh, brings up a more workable uh, material to the surface.